Welcome, everyone, to another exciting episode of Hobby Talk. My name is David Baez, and we're back with Scott Levy. We learned a lot about Scott in our previous episode as a collector and some of the amazing pieces that Scott has. Um, today, we're going to learn about another very, very exciting chapter um, in his life as a photographer so uh i don't want to spoil specifics i would but i'm super excited uh to welcome scott back thanks scott so much for joining today at hobby talk david thank you for having me back i love speaking with you and sharing my stories and i got some good stuff today yeah i i, I was tempted to kind of tease the, the 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 group uh out of the gate with my introduction but i don't i want you to kind of just explain it all my friend so so tell us about your beginnings in the world of photography and what started it all for you so when i was in dental school i would um go down to spring break to visit my grandparents in west palm beach florida where the braves and the expos had that training camp and my father had a Pentax camera and he had passed away um, a couple of years back. And I had his camera and it meant a lot to me to try and learn some photography. And when I would go down for spring break in West Palm, I would go to the ballpark every day and sit in the stand with the Pentax and take pictures like any other kind of fan. It turns out that I befriended a security guard named Joe who after a while, when I said to him, hey, Joe, is it, is it okay if I go on the field to take pictures? And he said, sure, why, why not go ahead? Oh, wow, that's great. So here I am coming from one side of the fence onto the field. <laughs> and at the same time, I'm excited, I'm nervous. And I said, I just got, want to take pictures up close now. <laughs> and this is with film. Okay, this was pre-digital. Right. And here I am. I'm now walking into the dugout of whoever the Braves or the Expos were playing pre-game. And baseball cards were coming to life for me. Yeah. What an amazing experience. That is so cool. So I not only was really impressed to be near... Tim Raines or Gary Carter or Dale Murphy. But I wrote down a quick little list here who we, we would call commons as cards. But baseball cards really came to life for me because I now was physically next to the person of which I collected his card in the 1960s. So it was equally impressive for me, like I said, to be around the stars. Yeah. I just jotted down some names. Cookie Rojas, Hal Lanier, Tony Cloninger, Cleet Boyer, Elrod Hendricks, Dennis Menke, Bobby Knopf, Jim Fergozzi, Dick Trzewski, Tony Taylor, Al Oliver, Manny Moda, Bobby Wine, Ray Fossey, Mike Shannon, Ed Woody Fryman, Pat Corrales, and I could go on and on. And you were just right by all these guys, like just another guy in the clubhouse. And I... I love baseball cards like I shared in the first episode. Yeah. But I have to say, okay, I can't get caught up in this. I got to take some pictures. <laughs> and what I would do is, because I didn't really, now I'm a hobbyist now with a camera. I'm on the field with the top photographer, all pro shooters, and I'm with my dad's camera around my neck. And so what I would do is I'd go to play Hey, Andre, could I take a picture, right? So here is, I don't know if you can see. Yeah, yeah. I'm putting it closer because a lot of the players had this surprised look on their face. <laughs> They're starting photographs. I say, hey, can I take it? They pick up their head and boom, my flash. <laughs> <laughs> the startled look. <laughs> it, it, yes, I have a lot of startled look. <laughs> So I would then be so excited to develop the film at a one hour photo place because I didn't know what I was shooting. And I would take pictures of any players. I would jump on photo shoots. I remember one time somebody was posing Reigns and Ricky Henderson together. 
And I would be off to the side, taking that from a different angle, learning as I'm going. And I'd run to the one hour photo place and I'd be so excited. It could be Len Cicada or Cal Ripken. It was just a baseball player. Yeah. So I would, I was with some of my Brooklyn buddies. I'd go to the one hour photo place and make up copies of the prints. And we'd all just like say, wow, this is, you know, exciting. And I could still would pinch myself, say, wow, I'm really on the field with these guys. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> I can't imagine what that feeling must have been like. It, it, I, you know, I was living a dream. And the best way I could put it, if I'm sitting there talking to Cookie Rojas, and I remember as a seven year old boy needing him on my checklist, and I'd say, that's Cookie Rojas. You know, and it was fascinating to me. And I got a little better at taking portraits or pictures. And he was one of my favorite, Dave Justice. Um, That's a great shot. Thanks. Dave is very photogenic. And in West Palm Beach, the dugout had a, like a blue wall and it was a great background. So I have a ton of great photos of Braves and Expos and visiting teams, you know. And that was incredible for me to actually, as a hobbyist, now, mind you, it's the same time period that I got back into the hobby. So from 82 to 87, I right. was looking at open packs. And then for eight days, every spring, going down and shooting pictures, mainly of headshots or, or kind of portraits. Right. I didn't have to do action. Yeah, that's that is just like again, my jaws is dropping because I, I I can only imagine how amazing that would have felt to almost essentially create your own baseball card, right? Because because that's that's part of the experience is that that shot. And here you are on the field with them and the and the professional photographers all around you as well, and you just felt like one of them, right? Yeah, tops was still doing the famous six poses, you know, bat up on the shoulder. Make believe, you know, the pitch is coming from here. One with the calf off in case the guy got traded. So I'm seeing the standard poses. And again, now, at that point, Dunross and Flair were in the game. So there were more photographers on the field. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to get out of everybody's way. And it almost was like I'd be sneaking up. I mean, I have pictures, you know, Frank Robinson and certain, like that Andre Dawson look of boom, you know, like, what what'd you just do? You know? <laughs> Who do you work for? <laughs> the bat up on your shoulder. Let me see a smile, you know. So that was just incredible for me to have that involvement. That's that's great. So so Scott, let me ask you this. As you had this amazing, you know, let's call it what, about a six year stint as the collector slash photographer. Share with us the details on how you transitioned into the world of sports card photography. That is that that to me was just amazing when you shared with me offline, and I'd love to learn more. And I'd love to share the story because I, I've been lucky enough um, to live a dream. Growing up, I couldn't play baseball. I loved baseball. I love baseball cards. And I still, as an adult now, was involving baseball somehow into my life. So four years after I became a dentist, my roommate from dental school knew the art director at Score Baseball Cards. So it's the summer of 1987. And I said, hey, Mike, I just want to see how they make baseball cards. Do you think you could call your friend so I could get a tour of how they produce baseball cards? And he set it up, uh, the woman's name was Sherry, and she showed me, now Score was just a brand new company then, they were doing right. this, and, and Sport Flicks. And I'm thanking her at the end of this tour. I appreciate it, I'm so gracious. And I, just before I opened the door to leave, I turned around and said, Sherry, where do you get your photos from? And she said, Oh, we have a New York-based photographer. I said, well, I take pictures. 
She said, do you have a portfolio? And I said, yes, and I really didn't. <laughs> she said, do you do game action? I said, yes, and I really didn't. <laughs> she said, you have portrait and candid, and that I did do, right? It sounds like a lot of us when we go on job interviews. <laughs> oh, it was a little bit fudging the lines. And she said, why don't you put together 20 of your best stop shots and I'll show it to my boss. So now I'm saying, how am I going to get action photos? I don't have equipment. I go into New York. I go to a camera rental place. I asked the guy, what do I need to shoot action? He was an old timer. He was not helpful. He said, no, you can't learn in a weekend how to do this. David, I rented the equipment. I scalped the ticket back then. It was Shea Stadium to get down low. It was a Met Cardinal game, some point in 87. And I'm shooting, again, now on slide film. You said it's still not digital, so I, I don't know what right. I'm shooting. And I take my Florida portraits and candid and intermix it with these slides of the ball players. It turns out that the slides I took were all slightly out of focus on that day. It's manual focus now. That's right. I know, right? I know how a player may stride or hit or pitch, but I can't handle a 400 millimeter lens like, you know. Anyway, I put the portfolio together. They were not comfortable with their existing New York photographer. They wanted to make a change. At this point, it's now September of 87. And they liked my portraits enough. And they said, you know what? Let's give Livy a chance. And I get a phone call. They say, your action is there, so-so. But we need some headshots of these rookies and new players coming up. So on September 18th, 1987, I had a credential waiting for me at Yankee Stadium. And I had to get head of September call-ups. Wow. Talk about nervous. I can only imagine what you were feeling walking into that stadium. Now, for all those years, for six years, I was banging out headshots on, you know, guys in West Palm Beach. Yeah. On a Yankee Stadium. You're going to the Bronx. <laughs> To the Bronx, and I got to shoot Roberto Kelly, Al Leiter. That's right. Yankees. David Cohn, bro? No, this is before Cohn. Okay. And Geronimo Barrow on the Blue Jays. They need a headshot of. Okay. Now, in Yankee Stadium, I didn't know where I was going, but I'm in the basement of Yankee Stadium, and, it, and I, I sweat when I'm nervous. And it's not good to sweat as it's dripping into your eye as you're looking through the camera. <laughs> I'm on the field of Yankee Stadium. Growing up a diehard Yankee fan, I said, this is crazy. But I couldn't enjoy that moment, so to speak, because I had to concentrate. Because if I made the headshots, I may have an opportunity going forward. Right. If I blew it, they'd never ask me again. <laughs> no more phone calls. So September of 87, I took those pictures and the guy said I did okay. And he said, we're considering using them. Now I had to wait till late February or early March of 88 when score got released, the cards got released to see if any of my images made it to a card. Oh, really? So you wouldn't get any like forward notice? He, he just said, oh, the stuff looks good, thanks, and we'll be in touch. Wow. So what ended up happening on the, on the cards? What did you discover? So I got a call in February, and I guess they were really not happy with their New York guy at the time. And they said, um, we want to send you down to spring training and see what you can do. And I have um, here... Uh, the actual letter, February 11th, 1988, with my assignment, what wow. photo did I doing? And I'm, I'm in shock now. I just want to see if I got Roberta Kelly on the back of a scorecard. <laughs> and now I'm going to Florida. Yeah. 
they have photo days where players make themselves make themselves accessible to all print media early in one spring training morning in the home white uniform. So all poses are taken care of for newspapers, tops, etc. Wow. Okay. So I was so nervous. I said, how am I going to perfect this action stuff? Because I had to do games in early March. I said, I can't believe they're giving me an opportunity. I went from being a hobbyist and now, and most photographers study photography, work their way up from high school ball, mm -hmm. college, minor leagues, and right. I'm going on the field in West Palm to work for baseball cards. <laughs> Not to mention you were in Yankee Stadium right out of the gate. <laughs> Stadium was my first assignment. Wow. So I did find out. And here is, you can imagine me going to a card show saying I want all the Roberto Kellys you got. People thought I knew something they didn't. <laughs> here's the headshot, right, on back of the scorecard. And here's a better image of it. And this is what I took that night. And they just used that little posted size headshot on the back of Kelly's card. And I was also lucky. This is a sport flick rack pack with my Jay Buna photo on the front. I, you know, it's 3D. I don't know what image is showing. Yeah, I, the headshot did come in a little bit there. Yeah, that, so that's your headshot, huh? So my Buna headshot made a sport flick, and the Kelly made the back of his card that was released in and, spring of 88. And those are officially the first two pictures that you've taken, that you took, excuse me, that landed on a card, right? How cool. So, so let's step back a second here. I was an insane collector as a kid. It was good enough for me to be on the field just asking players to take their pictures and now to see my photos on the back of a baseball card. So I'm going to share with you a component of this that was important because it was very challenging for me when I was now becoming a pro photographer for school. I had to learn how to do action on point, right? Nowadays with digital, you're a little out of focus. You could correct that. Yeah. Your image was off back then. The garbage. A lot of photog most photographers in New York resented the fact because this is, I'm now a dentist for four years. And they'd say to me, you know, hey, what other sports do you shoot? You do football, you do basketball. I said, no, I just do baseball. They said, you make a living just doing baseball? I said, no, I'm a dentist. And so there was a resentment that they felt that I was taking food off their plate. And I would say to them, hey, if you're good at what you do, you don't have to worry about my pictures. Just worry about my pictures. So now I'm in spring training of 88, and my first assignment is to shoot this young Met player, Kevin Elster. So I'm in St. Lucie, and he's taking infield, so I could get a simulated action shot, but I need a headshot. That's my assignment for the whole day. I said, Kevin, I just need a headshot. He says, oh, let's get it after I go in and um, take a shower and work, you know, the trainer. David? I had to wait close to three hours. Oh, my God. For him to come back on the field, you know. <laughs> All for a headshot for Kevin Elsa. Oh, and, good Lord. Um, so I never forgot that. Oh, by the way, here's that famous headshot. Here's the um, Elster headshot. <laughs> I, I spent a few bucks on that card. <laughs> And I got many more if you need more. No, I'm okay. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Um, yeah. It paid day rate by score. I got paid per shot, the Buner and maybe $50 for the Kelly or and the Buner each. The day rate for score back then was $200 as a photographer. Okay. Top, top photographers made more. 
Here's another component. My family and friends would say, wait a second, you're giving up the dental income you could generate in one day in your office for a $200 day rate to go take pictures? Right. And I'd say, it ain't the money. I'm living a dream. All right. Hear what family or friend said. Now, mind you, I'm getting silent treatment in the photo pit in Yankee Stadium, wherever I went, because people didn't want to know from me. Until they each develop or had a dental question or a toothache. Then they... <laughs> <laughs> then, they, then you would get the call. I'm, I'm telling you, I was met with such adversity. My first game ever in Yankee Stadium, April 10th, 1988. You're supposed to mark your spot in the photo pit. And I saw the photographer, another photographer, take my name off my spot. And I purposely went over to shake his hand because he now had my crumpled up name in his hand. Right. And he dropped it to the floor and I shook his hand. Turns out we became friends years later. But it was very difficult because I was living a dream but feeling like isolated, you know? Yeah. Well, I yeah, I get what you're saying. I mean, I think a lot of folks were, were uh, to your point from earlier, right? Intimidated at the fact that you were quote unquote, stealing food from the table or whatever the case is, right? Yeah, yeah, they really, um, and as I, I ended up working for score baseball card from 1988 through spring training of 92. Okay. Continued as a freelance photographer until about 2008, you know? Okay. Um, but even after doing it for a number of years, I could fly out to Chicago and nobody would talk to me. And I, you know, after a while, I didn't care. Yeah. I focused on what I had to do. Yeah. Know? And, and I tell you, I, I think one of the best comments you made there earlier was about, you know, this wasn't a job for you as much as it was just living a dream, a childhood dream of meeting iconic players on, you know, uh, Hall of Famers, just people that you were previously seeing on your television or on a, in a magazine or on a baseball card, and now you are part of that process. So that's 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 an amazing story and transition. I got to tell you, David, to go from a baseball card collector to a photographer just as an amateur, being at the right place, right time, opening up my mouth, I was about to leave that door. Yeah at art director's tour but i said where do you get your cards from if it wasn't from joe back in west palm beach i never would have had the access to be on the field so i'm really grateful right place right time who you know right right i never took it for granted yeah. you know no and that's that's again i i the you the, you know the every dot connected at the right time and and you seize the moment to live effectively a live to live a dream um uh, for you for yourself and and i even just hearing this story you know the hairs go up a little bit because uh yeah i i i, I can't imagine how cool that would be to just be there interacting day by day and meeting some of these guys and and being part of a hobby that you love like in in, in creating the hobby that you love so that that story is just fantastic i love it Thanks, David. You know, I can't tell you. I, it's hard for me to even put into words. And I use Roberto Kelly because that was the first one. But I made, I took this card and put it on plaques and sent it to all my relatives. Yeah. You know, baseball card, you yeah. know. Um, and it may sound corny, but baseball cards were coming to life for me. And yes, approaching superstars was one thing, but I always appreciated and loved to talk to a coach, you know. Um, yeah. marginal ball player who we who we would call a common or a minus star. I got to know them as a person. Yeah. Yeah. And I imagine you must have so many wonderful um, you know, stories. And uh I absolutely would love to hear those one day, my friend, because I I, I think people often overlook and, and correct me if I'm wrong. I mean you obviously know ten times, you know, a million times more than I would, but 
there's some wonderful stories behind. I, I should say I should, most of them maybe are wonderful, uh, but there's stories, interesting stories behind every player and that somebody like yourself <clears throat> couldn't have seen and, and, and witnessed and, and, you know, learning the, about the player as a person more, you know, instead of a player. So I think you, you have probably a nice collection of, of stories uh, that, 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 you know, during that tenure as a photographer that um, must, must still resonate with you today. Right. Absolutely. I am so blessed. And, you know, I think it was in 69 that a top photographer took a photo of a bat boy and they used it as Aurelio Rodriguez's card or something. I had to know, I would do my research and homework on the minor leaguers and try and match up pictures. So, because when I shot these players on a photo day, you could shoot 75 guys. Mm -hmm. And I had to develop the film in Florida and ID the player. If I mislabeled it and my editor in Connecticut doesn't know who Mariana Rivera is, it could become a, you know, yeah. the error. Yeah. I mean, I was, you made, I was thinking about that infamous Don Russ, um, Johnny Ray, Barry Bonds error card, right? Where ah. <laughs> that's one of them. I had to check the bat handle to make sure it was a clean saying, you know, every time I posed Billy. <laughs> you know did you ever I, did you ever beat the photographer that took that that uh, ff error picture <laughs> I, I i met all these photographers and i used to train of the top photographer because he had started in the 60s so he was the photographer who took the images on the cards that i was buying as a kid that's cool becoming great friends and I would just always love to hear his stories, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I could imagine how, you know, meeting, meeting some of the legendary folks that weren't even around at the time you were taking pictures, you know, some of them, you know, and uh, hearing some of those stories, that must've been amazing as well. Only after they had a toothache, would they be willing to talk to me? And <laughs> Mickey and Bart, et cetera. But no. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> there's, there's value in the dentist part of your career in the world of the sports cards. I love that. Heard about me once they had a dental question, and but that's okay. I, I, I understand, you know. <laughs> that's like having a mechanic in the family, and you're sitting at the Thanksgiving table asking him about the noise in your engine. <laughs> yeah, believe me, press rooms, guys would call me and they'd say, "Hey, Doc, can I have something?" And then I look at them, wait, you haven't spoken to me in 18 months, and now you want to talk, but. <laughs> So at the time, Flair was happening, Dunruss, Score, Upper Deck, you know, cops. So there were a lot of photographers on the field. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's, yeah. So let me ask you this. Um, can you share with us some of the most famous or iconic pictures, you know, that you took that ended up on a card? And if you have any maybe available that you can share with us right now? I do. Awesome. So it's June of 1992 and photographers get to the ballpark about three hours before batting. I'm sorry, before a game to do pregame images, either candidates or portraits. And I happen to have been setting up in the photo pit in Yankee stadium late June and I'm friends with the Yankee photographer, team photographer. He's walking from center field with a kid. And he yells from the second base area, hey, Doc, shoot this kid. So I pick up my long lens. Now, again, I'm in the third base photo pit. I got to focus on second base. And I yell at the kid, put the bat up on your shoulder. I take some pictures, you know. And it turns out that kid was Derek Jeter. Oh, they man. Drafted before. And it got used for his pinnacle rookie card. And that's amazing. <laughs> my daughter ended up incorporating it in a book report when she was younger. That's and so cool. 
Derek in the next spring training in 1993, where he was number 72. So in terms of cards I've taken, let's say that nowadays have the most value monetarily would probably be this Jeter card as a PSA 10. Yeah. That is, that is so cool. And I, I do have that card. <laughs> so, how cool is that? Yeah. I, so, and that all happened because I was there early in the morning and the Yankee photographer said, Hey doc, shoot this kid. Um, and the following spring training, when you're shooting on that photo day early in the morning, young players have index cards with their number on it. So I could identify with a roster going home, who's number 85, who's number this, and Derek had number 72. Right. Ended up being number two, you know? Um, so. What a great card. That's great. I, you know, one of the cards I took early on, and again, he was really a big deal then was the scorecard with Conseco. And here it is being an unopened collector in a rack pack. My card, my image that I took of Conseco, I now have in a 1989 rack pack. That is so cool. <laughs> That's great. Um, and then I told you, I like multiple players. Here's like Dale Murphy and Al Leiter. Now, I know in terms of the hobby, where score ranks in comparison to tops, but to me, being an unopened collector, to see my work in cards, I, I still have a hard time expressing how excited I am about that, you yeah. know? So one day I get an assignment to shoot Mickey Morandini on the Phillies, try and get a defensive play. So I'm in the photo pit at then it was Shea Stadium and I'm focused on him. And I got lucky. If you could see him, you see the ball coming yeah. out of he he jumped up. Wow. And many years later I saw Mickey and he said you were the one who took that. He says, I can't tell you how many times I get that card in the mail to sign. So it was so cool at times to show a player, hey, I took the photo of your card, you know? Yeah. Well, well, <laughs> while you're doing a, a filling. <laughs> yeah. um, no, but that's, that, that's a really great shot, Scott, the one of Morandini. Thank you. Um, and again, tying it into the website, I'm sorry, the Facebook site we're a part of, this is a 1992 score box. And that's my Ken Griffey Jr. card on the box. So you took that picture of Griffey, huh? Right. Wow. That is great. Um, and then I got to know Jose Canseco, you know, after a while. And he signed, this is that same photo. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, so he signed that one, huh? He signed it for me. That's and great. It ties into what I was sharing in the other episode of when I see a box of cards, mm -hmm. I got to see my images of a card on a box. It's very surreal, David. Yeah, I, I can't even imagine what you, what, you know, how you feel because, yeah, I mean, it's just me looking at this through this interview and, and my hairs are going up on my arms right now thinking like, God, to have been that person to, to be there and, and just be a part of all that. It's just great. I, 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 I truly, I, tr I, 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 not, I'm going to say envy you, I'm, <laughs> but, uh, you know, like I, I, kind of living vicariously through you as we're doing this interview, like, and just thinking about how you must've felt during that, that stint of, I, I, I would say peak, what, five years, right? 
five years with the card company, but I was a pro shooter for 20 years. For 20 years. Wow. So I, I had a lot of good stuff happen after 92 in my career photographically. I'm focusing now on the photography. On the, yeah. I'm sorry, on the baseball cards. Stuff. Right. What I want to, I got to share this story. So one day, yeah. I, summer of 90, I get a call and they say, Scott, you got to go up to Toronto. There's going to be this two sport player. We want to photograph. Oh, man. I said, what do you mean? He plays hockey and he's going to play baseball? They said, yeah, we have the exclusive. Anyway, so I get up there and they say his agent will be waiting for you. And it turns out it's Eric Lindros. Okay. All right. That's so. He was working out with the Blue Jays that day. And Score was going to have an exclusive of his baseball card. They knew he was going to be a star hockey player. Right. So I photograph him as he's hitting in the batting cage. I take his headshot. And they make a whole big deal over it. Eric Lindros' rookie card is a baseball player. But it was all a publicity stunt. Oh, yeah. Eric never stepped on the baseball field again. Right. But Gore used that as an angle to try and pump up interest. And, in, you know, he ended up having a very nice hockey career. Yeah. But I remember it being such a big deal that, you know, I was going to shoot the Lindros card, you know. So I don't have it in front of me, but Eric Lindros' baseball card is something that I took also. That's really cool. And, and that was in an era that, the two sport phenomenon, if you will, was still kind of alive and well, because obviously Bo was the big one in the, in the, out of the gate, but then Deion Sanders, who came up in the 1990, 89, 90 um, era, you know, with the Yankees. Right. So I don't, you know, that I did have the opportunity of, of taking pictures of Dion a little as a brave and a little as a Yankee. You okay. Know? Yeah. Um, and again, this was the Bo Jackson time. Yeah. You know, which I'm going to get to a story a little later on about yeah. the both card. Um, so cool. it was pretty, yeah, it's pretty incredible to interact with them. And it would take me back to my childhood of just my, the love of baseball cards. And now I'm like part of it. You know, that, that was an amazing kind of sequence of events and, and a great story um, that you shared with us about, your beginnings as a photographer and how you evolved into that. Um, I, again, I, I can only imagine the amount of amazing stories that you have for certain players and just experiences. And I would love to hear more in the future about that. If you're up for it, Scott, I, I think it would be Absolutely. Great. Absolutely. And I'm going to keep it real. Okay. I'm going to, you know, tell you how much I love Bernie Williams and how much maybe I don't like Albert Bell so much. But <laughs> I think you're not the only one that didn't like Albert Bell. Well, yeah. I, <laughs> Joey he was Bell. not friendly to photographers, you know. Yeah. Um, so I, I honestly think, I, and not to get off on the rails here, but I honestly think that because Joey Bell to me, or Albert Bell, excuse me, is one of those guys that I often debate with friends that, you know, has the, you know, he didn't have the years, but his, his whether you love them or hate him, this kid had stats and, and, and he's borderline, even with the 10 solid years he had before everything just went downhill. I was like, you wonder if he had enough for hall of fame. So um, I, we, we always have that toss. You mentioned Albert Bell. I just started thinking about that right now, but the common denominator with everyone I talked to is like, Oh yeah, he was terrible. You know, the, the press hated him and he was just not a nice guy. <laughs> well, he let me pose him when he was Joey Bell. When it became Albert Bell, it was a whole nother story after that, <laughs> which I'll share next time. Sounds good. Sounds good. So I'll tell you what, Scott, why, why don't we do this? I have, uh, like I do it every episode, I have a couple of final fun questions for you. And I have the photographer version of that. Are you up for, for a couple of questions there? Let's do it. All right, let's do it. So what's the one picture that you took that didn't make it on a card that you wished would have made it on a card and why? Well, I came really close and it's now I could look back at the story and smile. But at the time, so Bo Jackson was a real big deal then. 
And I was in the third base photo pit and he struck out. Player strikes out, you really can't use that for any kind of action usually. And he walks back to the dugout. Out of the corner of my eye, I see him take a baseball bat and break it over his thigh. And I swing my camera back, manual focus again, to shoot him breaking the bat over his thigh. My editor calls me that day. He sees a shot on the, the photo on the news. Did you get it? I said, I think so. I, I don't know. It's got to be developed. Well, my image was slightly out of focus. Oh. The guy next to me ended getting the Bo Breaker card. Oh. And my boss, he never let me forget it. He'd always say, Levy, I had to pay the other freelancer. <laughs> Because you was just a little out of focus. The point being, I didn't stay with Bo from going from home plate to the dugout. Usually a player just walks back dejectedly. Yeah. Bo happened to break the bat over his thigh that day. Bo you know? Breaker. I, yeah, that's a classic card right there. So I almost had that shot. <laughs> the one that got away, Scott. Yes. <laughs> and I got a lot of flack from my boss from it. But... <laughs> that's funny. So last question for you is conversely, so let's do the opposite here. What's the one picture that you took that did make it on a card that you weren't too thrilled about and why? So I was lucky enough, David, to go to the 1989 Earthquake World Series. And it got interrupted for 10 days. Right. And then Oakland went on to win that World Series. And the photo position that I was in was kind of from behind home plate. And I keep thinking now ahead, if Oakland wins, there's going to be a celebration. It's usually on the mound, or it could be wherever the last out is made. And it turns out the last out was made at first base. And score used this shot of the celebration, which is nice but I had better images a few shots prior where players were leaping up into the air. All right. More action within the photo. So I'm happy they used this, but I would have, I wish they would have used a few frames prior during the celebration to right. capture the moment, you know? Oh, before we go, before yeah. we go, we got another minute. Yeah, of course. Go for it. I'm really proud of this because I, so when I left SCORE, I started to do some freelance. And, again, I did my homework with the rookies. And Chipper Jones, this is like an upper deck card of his. Yeah. I took in the backfield in West Palm Beach as a Brave. So um, my car – oh, again, unopened stuff. This is the box that has my A-Rod portrait on it. That's your and shot, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's on the wrapper. So, again, sharing it with the guys in the hobby because we do unopened. So, How cool. I'm really lucky and grateful to actually, like, have my images on, on a box where I, I stare at these boxes from the 60s, and now I have some images, you know, here. Yeah. So, and that's, I'll tell you, man, a few generations from now and beyond, there's going to be somebody staring at that box, remembering their childhood. And Same that's going to be your picture on there. Saying, what dentist took that photo? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, Scott, this, this was just an amazing interview. I really, really, really enjoyed this. Uh, thank you so much for sharing another um, exciting chapter in your life with all of us hobby folks. And uh, I can't wait to talk to you more about some of those great stories during your time. Thanks. Thanks so much. It'll, it was my pleasure. I was excited to share it with the group. Stories just kept flooding to me and I'll be more than happy to come and keep talking about my interactions um, with ball players and, and how lucky I've been. I'm really blessed and lucky and I'm happy to share it with everybody. Yeah, I can't thank you enough. Thanks again, and we'll talk soon. Can't wait. Thanks. 
Hey guys, thanks for watching today's video. Please click on the like and subscribe button. Just a couple quick updates. We are officially live on iTunes, Google, as well as Spotify for our podcast. Go to hobbynetworkgroup.com for more details and links. Thanks for watching today's video and have a great day. Bye.